Good afternoon friends. In this video lecture, I will talk about real-time PCR or RT-PCR. This real-time PCR, as the name suggests, it gives, gives you the information, real-time information, that how much DNA has been amplified. So basically it is used to quantitate uh, amount of RNA, expression of certain gene under certain condition. For example, if you are uh, testing the efficacy of certain drug, uh, and then you will see that uh, a particular, maybe more one or more genes uh, may get uh, overexpressed or down, down expressed or overregulated or downregulated by the uh, effect of that particular drug. So if you want to see that, you will go for real-time PCR. This machine is uh, uh, fitted with a spectrophotometer inside uh, or fluorimeter uh, that detects the amount of fluorescence that is emitted and this amount of fluorescence is exactly the uh, in, in the proportion of the double stranded DNA so when the PCR is going on the amount of DNA increases and this machine gives you information how much DNA has been amplified so what was the starting material that you can back calculate so let's now see how this process uh, occurs Popular methods. One is called the Packman assay, and another one is called the CyberGrid. CyberGrid assay. So let's discuss in brief what are these assays are about. So this Packman assay it uses a, a probe. A probe, a small oligonucleotide molecule which has a, a fluorophore molecule, I am designating it as F. This F is a fluorophore, it is a molecule which will emit fluorescence and there is a quencher at this end. This is 3 prime end and this one is 5 prime end. At the 5 prime end, this probe has a fluorophore and at the 3 prime end, there is a quencher. So when this quencher is at close proximity to the fluorophore, I mean when this quencher is bound to this 3 prime end, the fluorescence, the fluorophore is not able to produce any fluorescence. This probe has to bind with the double stranded DNA that is being amplified, that is being PCR, that is being used in the PCR. That is a template DNA. So now suppose this is the template DNA. And this probe, it comes and it binds at this position. It binds at a position between the two primers. Suppose this is the quencher and this is the 5 prime end and 3 prime end of the template. So your primer is bound here, 5 prime to 3 prime. In the other strand also, suppose this is the other strand, this is 3 prime end, this is 5 prime end. And your probe has bound here with the fluorophore at 5 prime end and quencher at the 3 prime end. The primer has again bound here, 5 prime to 3 prime direction. So this probe, it binds within this pair of primers. In the path of the pair of primers, in the path of the DNA polymerase, tag DNA polymerase. So when this, the tag DNA polymerase will start synthesis, it will bind here and will proceed in this direction. This also, it will proceed in this direction, 5 prime to 3 prime direction. So when it will move, when it will, it will face this probe, this stackman probe, so suppose this DNA is being extended and the DNA polymerase has come to this place. So what it will do? It will cleave this fluorophore, the 5 prime end, it has a 5 prime to 3 prime exonucleus activity. Using that, it will cleave this fluorophore. So now the fluorophore, the fluorophore molecule is not attached with the, with the probe now. The fluorophore is not at the close, no longer at the close proximity to the quencher. So it will now fluoresce. Once it is being detached, I mean, the 
stacked DNA polymerase that will remove this uh, fluorophore, fluorophore from this probe. The fluorophore will move away from the quencher and the quencher will not be able to quench the fluorescence of the fluorophore and the fluorophore will emit the fluorescence and will we'll say or, or will indicate that okay the primary extension process has occurred and this is directly proportional to the amount of DNA. So as many times the PCR the amplification will occur more amount of fluorescence will be produced. So you can easily back calculate what was the starting material after how many cycles I'm getting this, uh, this amount of fluorescence. So what could be the amount of the starting material? You can easily back calculate that. So this is how the Stackman assay system works. Now let us talk about cyber green. This is a little bit more simpler. Here the cyber green is, a, is also a fluorescence molecule and it has a a tendency to bind with double stranded DNA. So when you are doing PCR, you have to melt the double stranded DNA, it becomes single stranded, okay. When it is double stranded, the fluorophore, the cyber green has bound here, emitting a fluorescence, okay. But the starting material was low, it was less in amount, so the fluorescence will also be less. So when the primer will bind and a new DNA will be synthesized, say this one, after one round of PCR, more amount of cyber green will bind with this double stranded DNA and more amount of fluorescence will be emitted. So like this, at every round of PCR, the amount of DNA will be doubled and the fluorescence will also get doubled because more amount of cyber green molecules will bind with the double stranded DNA. It does not bind with the single stranded DNA or it poorly binds with the single stranded DNA and the primer template junction also. The tendency of binding of cyber green is in the minor group uh, and mostly in the AT rich region that is another factor that is the, that is not going to affect. Of course, uh, if the AT amount will be less in the template DNA, the binding will be less in that way, but it will be proportional to the amount of DNA. As many times the PCR reaction will amplify, the amount of uh, fluorescence will increase in that proportion. So this will give you information that what was the starting material of that uh, PCR uh, process or reaction. So this is how these two processes, the real-time PCR, actually it, it is a quantitative PCR. You can also call it qPCR. In earlier days, this, this machine was, uh, this kind of techniques were not available. So at that time, you have to do uh, gel documentation system, you have to use gel doc uh, with, with the autoradiogram or the the, uh, piece, the gel electroprocess, the gel, the bands that you are getting, you, you quantitated the band intensity and then with the help of that you back calculate, you used to back calculate the, uh, the static material. That was, that process uh, used to be called semi-quantitative PCR method. So this is all about uh, real-time PCR. Hope you have understood this. Thanks for watching.